Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. We are live with the Martial Arts Experience with another special edition. I know we're spoiling all the viewers. Uh, we had an earlier special edition on Monday, and we're back today with a special, special treat. Um, I'm excited. I've been trying to work with this amazing gentleman uh, before and getting our schedules together, and he was gracious enough to, to put some time together uh, that we were able to bring him on the show today. Uh, so today is all things Cobra Kai and Karate Kid. And I know that there's a huge following for that. I'm obviously one of those followers as well. And we're just excited to have this amazing, amazing individual come on today. Uh, now, let's see. I hope you guys remember the character, one of the most iconic Karate Kid actors. And without further ado, I just want to bring him on now. And this is the man, the myth, the legend, Sensei Ron Thomas. How you doing, sir? I'm doing great. How you doing? I'm hey, doing well, sir. I'm doing well. So, yeah. Ron, let's just jump right in, man. This crazy, fast-paced locomotive of the Cobra Kai machine and Karate Kid machine. How do you feel, you know, uh, being a part of this this crazy phenomena? Well, <laughs> the well, the phenomena part of present day, you know, is um, I think due in large part because there was a built-in global fan base already. Uh, and it's a generational film. It's a very unique uh, universe, you know, the Karate Kid universe. It's a very unique film in that it's been generational. I mean, you know, the original fans have had their kids watch it and their grandkids watch it and, you know, and everybody. It's just a film that stayed alive all these years. So it had this global impact already. And that's part of the genius of the the whole thing is is uh, the creators tapped into that global audience, and so it had forward momentum from the get go, and wow. um, here we are. So yeah, I f I feel honored and blessed, and and to be a part of the original movie and of course the new series. I mean, it's unbelievable. You know, kudos to you and congratulations. You know, with all the. Uh, you know, just just everything that's going on. It's a phenomenal thing. And I really think keeping that 80s nostalgia has been the amazing tool, you know, that they've used, Ron. And I mean, if you haven't watched Karate Kid and you're a martial artist, I don't know what planet you've been on. And if you don't right. know Bobby Brown from Cobra Kai, I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I actually had a friend of mine that I grew up with. Uh, and, you know, when Cobra Kai came out and started getting some, you know, publicity and the, and the word out there, he he actually never watched the original freaking movie. No way. I, I told him, you're like, you're like, you must be the only guy on the planet that's <laughs> never seen Karate Kid. Yeah, yeah. And, oh, and then, yeah. of course, he went and watched it and like, oh, OK, I get it. <laughs> I don't watch a lot of movies. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> now, now, Ron, I know you do a lot of interviews and, and I don't want to, you know, harp on a lot of the questions that you've done before. But, you know, for my viewers in this show, uh, let, let's go back to the 80s real fast, a quick, you know, time machine and tell us how did you get involved with the franchise? How were you picked for that iconic role? Well, it, uh, you know, I was moved to Hollywood from my hometown, Reno, Nevada, and uh to pursue my dream as an actor, you know? So I was there, I was in Hollywood, I was doing my thing. I was going to acting classes. I was doing everything that an actor does, you know, um, staying in shape and, and just trying to get parts and get better at my craft, et cetera. I had a stage background prior to moving. Oh, wow. And, um, and then I, you know, I landed, I started working kind of right away, moved down here and I was started going to a college and I was starting the University of Reno, and I went to Santa Monica College. And in the middle of all that, I got the Conan show, which was a lot, not Conan, Conan the Barbarian. Okay. okay? Not Conan the Comedian. <laughs> Conan the Barbarian show up at Universal Studios, which was a live attraction. It was, it was kind of like Karate Kid in a way that it um, was a very innovative show with lots of live special effects for the, you know, tourists coming from around the world to see. So it was really fun to be a part of that show. And um, in the middle of all that, the, the uh, producer of that show, Gary Goddard, came up to me and said, you know, there's this movie out coming out that you should audition for because of your martial arts background and, and you'd be perfect for it because they're looking for California kids with blonde hair, et cetera. Right. And uh, it's called The Karate Kid. Wow. And the first thing I thought was, well, that's a stupid title. Um, <laughs> <laughs> who came up with The Karate Kid? And then I come to find out later, it's actually a comic book series, you know, but that day that or that night, I think I came home from rehearsing and, and working on the Conan show. And my, my manager called me and said, you have a movie, you have an audition for this movie called the karate kid. 
And I said, well, that's a stupid title. <laughs> and he said, you know, you're going to go in tomorrow. You're going to meet the casting director, Carol Jones. But listen, don't talk about your martial arts. Oh, I was already a second degree black belt at the time. I'm like, what do you mean? Don't talk about my martial arts. It's called the crime. Right. He said, yeah, look, man, they're looking for actors. They're going to train you in the martial arts anyway with this guy named Pat Johnson. Mm. And um, just focus on your acting. If they ask you about the martial arts background, then tell them. But don't bring it up because they're really just right now. They're just focused on your act, your uh, acting ability. OK, so, um, you know, so there there you have it. That's my wife talking in the background. Uh, that's OK, that's OK. She's on a webinar right now, too. So, you know, this is COVID environment work from home thing. That's right. Uh, That's right. You might get my my uh, dogs barking, too. I, I, who knows what's going to happen? Anyway. <laughs> OK, so where was I? So, yeah. So I went in on the audition. They brought me back for a second audition at some point. You know, and, and my martial arts background never came up. Wow. They wanted to know about my athleticism. You know, they wanted to see that, you know, you were an athletic guy. And but it's funny. So like six weeks into rehearsals. Pat John, you know, one martial artist knows another martial artist. Right, right, absolutely. A black so belt. You hide, Ron, you're hiding how to punch and how to kick your second degree black belt. Right, no. A, mar <laughs> a martial arts knows how, you know, they, a black belt moves differently than a white belt. Right? Absolutely. Yes. Just, you can spot it. So Pat Johnson came up to me about six weeks into rehearsal and he says, you know something, don't you? You know, and then I had to spill the beans and stuff. But um, that was my original. That's how I got involved. And, and it was, um, you know, I was already a fan of Ralph Macchio from The Outsiders. I, you know, John Avildsen, the director of Rocky. Come on. You yeah. know, I, I mean, he's. And so and then we were rehearsing with, uh, you know, Jerry Weintraub. We called him God, you know, producer of, of The Karate Kid and how many other shows he's produced and brought to us. Yeah. Um, he hired the best of the best to train us in everything. So wow. we had, like, we were training on, we were riding motorcycles as part of our rehearsals. We were, of course, doing karate every single day with Pat Johnson. He brought in a guy who used to play soccer with Pele and to <laughs> teach us how to play soccer because we had the soccer scene. You know, Are you kidding me? Pele trained you guys? I, no, no, not Pele. A guy uh -huh. who, used, who used to play with him. Play with him. Gotcha, uh, gotcha. Yeah, from, I forgot what country he's from. Yeah, you yeah. know, so... Uh, you looked very good though, too. You sold it. You did good. Yeah, no, thank you. So yeah, it was, you know, and and Ralph had to dribble the ball on his knees and stuff. So there was all of these um, activities that were, you know, just plain ass fun to yeah, yeah, yeah. to rehearse. And and it was, it was kind of like playing at the same time, working really, really hard. But um, that was my initial, my initial thing, my initial experience. So now you, you said California kid, and I don't want to put you on the spot, but I put some of your pictures up. So it's yeah. this sexy guy with all that hair that, yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, that you think that sealed the deal right there. I mean, because you had it. You had a look. There's no doubt about it. Yeah. California, California boys with, you know, blonde hair, blue eyes. Um, so I'm still trying to I'm still trying to get the name of the doctor that Ralph and Billy used to keep their hair, getting their hair back. <laughs> they won't give it to me, man. <laughs> Oh my goodness! I like, hey, this, you, I like this. That's yeah. more distinguished. I don't know. That's more distinguished. I, yeah. I, I like that. I like that. So, so you know, um, obviously, you, you know, you touch base as far as some of those real, you know, small uh, tidbits that you said about the training. I didn't know that about the soccer expert and and some of those other things. But how about when the fighting came and the choreography? You know, were you able to kind of you know put a little bit of hits in there? Or did you kind of have to stay back? Like how how, how was that? Well, no, Pat, at one point doing the montage stuff at, at, you know, at Cal State Northridge is where we filmed it, the All Valley Championships. At one point, Pat Johnson was just overloaded with all of these black belts they brought in to do extra roles and, and just be background guys and, and do these fighting scenes at a tournament. You had to fill up the thing and make it look like a real tournament. Right. And he was really busy um, choreographing all these little montage scenes. And he just came up to me and said, Ron, take this guy here and this guy here and and choreograph a couple real short fight scenes wow and then just bring it to me uh, for, for approval and so of course i'm a jujitsu guy it was a japanese jujitsu practitioner okay. that's my background not karate oh wow okay people think i was karate but no i mean i trained in a lot of different styles over the years and stuff but so when you see me do like the flying leg scissors 
you know, in the tournament, I do the leg scissors, take yeah. the guy, and I hit him with a back fist on the ground. That's yeah. that's jujitsu. That's a that's a that's a throw called kanisute, mm. you know, flying leg scissors out straight out of Japanese jujitsu and wow. judo, and um, you know, and so so I got to do some of the things that 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 are comfortable for me, you know, the leg sweep and stuff that I got to do, uh, you know, in season three uh, to my buddy, Billy <laughs> in the church, uh, you know, that's stuff I've been doing, doing for years. And, and uh, right. yeah, so I did get to, I did get to choreograph my stuff in the montage and it was approved by Pat. So, wow. Uh, yeah, that was an honor, you know, that's awesome. Now, now it's funny. I don't know, you know, we've had a lot of guests on our show over the last two years, but we also had, uh, Grandmaster Dara Vidal. Uh, he was on our show way back, season one. And uh, yeah. <laughs> he said, uh, he, he made. The point. I like to make <laughs> uh, Ron, he, you know, he made the point that um, there's only a couple true black belts that were actually part of, you know, of the franchise, and you're one of them, you know. Yeah. Um, so, you know, the fact that, like, your casting person said, Hey, don't tell them, don't do this. Like, you know, that's a little crazy, obviously, you know? Well, you know, it's a weird thing. If you go back to the eighties, when you were a martial arts action star, you were not considered to be a good actor. Mm, right. right. So think about the martial arts action stars of the eighties and ask yourself, are they good actors? Right. Right, right. I'm not going to name right. names. But <laughs> there were very few good actors that were martial arts, had a martial arts, but they were martial arts action stars. So it didn't freaking matter if they could act as long as they could, you know, do a bunch of crazy moves on screen and make fights look real. And, and you know, so it was all action packed. Um, right. And so for me, it was it was a conflict back then. I can remember like, um, what do I do? You know, I really, I had an acting background before I moved to LA. I, I was, had a stage background. I did a lot of theater wow. and I took my craft very seriously, but I also took martial arts very seriously. So I was kind of like, well, I was conflicted. Like, what do I want to do? Do right. I want to, do I want to pursue being an action star? Or do I want to pursue being an actor? And I always kind of avoided the action thing and focused on my acting. Um, right. Nowadays, you know, there are some very, very good actors that are also very good martial arts. Like a good friend of mine is Mark Dacascos. Yes. And, and, you know, from John Wick and, and you know. Phenomenal martial artist, yeah. yeah. A phenomenal gymnast, martial artist, um, and very, very good actor. You right. know, so nowadays, nowadays they've kind of blended. But back in the 80s, there was a separation and you didn't want to be known in the casting community. If you were focused on your acting, you kind of just want to avoid talking about your martial arts. So right. that, I, I think that's where that whole mindset came from. Wow. Wow. Yeah. Now, now, Ron, with all of our shows, we, we, we always get we're blessed and have a lot of participation. And one of the cool things we do is we always try to have our guests uh, do a quick shout out, you know, to people that chime in and and say hello. So you've had quite a few people chime in. Uh, so we're going to say hello. Uh, the first one, if you could say a quick hello to Levi, if you could say hello to Levi. Hey, Levi, how's it going, buddy? Must be the same. Is it the same Levi? Is it the same Levi I did a podcast with? Is it uh, Levi Dennis? Yeah. Yeah, I think hey, so, Levi. yeah. Um, we also have a, she is a Karate Kid fan, Cobra Kai fan. She actually drove uh, from near the Canada border to come to our 52 Masters premiere that we did a couple weeks ago. And her name is Sheila. Do you know Sheila? I know a couple Sheilas that follow me on Facebook, so probably... Hey, Sheila. Yep. yep. So if you yeah. can say hello to Sheila. Hey, Sheila. How you doing? Uh, we also have Mr. Glenn Deering. If you could say hello to Glenn. Hey, Glenn. What's up, man? We have Master Steve Gross from Chicago, Illinois. If you could say hello to Master Steve. Master Steve. How you doing, buddy? We have uh, Mr. Dustin Nino. If you could say hello to Dustin. What's up, Dustin? We have Anna Fries Hummel. Uh, if you could say hello to Anna. Hey, Anna. How's it going? And our good buddy, our mutual buddy that I think helped put this together is Sensei William Christopher Ford. He's logged in watching. Hey, Sensei, Sensei Ford, my buddy. He's a, I have much respect for this guy. He's the He's man. An awesome guy. He's an awesome guy. He's a definitely the man. So, yeah. um, so <clears throat> I, I, again, we're going to close up to Karate Kid. But the one thing that I thought as, as, a, as a young kid kind of growing up, the, the character and the way that you sold – Bobby, you knew Bobby was conflicted, right? He didn't want to hurt him, and he did. And and I got to be honest with you, you did a great 
great job on selling that because anybody that watched that, you know, they could tell the conflict. They didn't want to do it, but you know, you ended up doing it. And you know, the way that you project projected that emotion through the screen was it's iconic. I mean, anybody that's watched karate kid, man, I mean, that's an emotional part. So, um, you know, what did you tune into to be able to kind of get that, you know, were you conflicted? Did you get, you know, method? What, what did you do? Yeah. You know, what's funny about me personally and studying the martial arts and, and jujitsu is, you know, called the gentle art. And it's only gentle because you can subdue an opponent without causing any injury. Mm. You, know, you can also bust an arm like that. Right. So uh, the thing about jujitsu is how, always pounded into me by my sensei, Professor Larry Carey, Lawrence Carey, um, was safety. You know, when you're going to practice an art like that, you've got to you've got to be safe. And, and I personally, as much as I like the martial arts, I never enjoyed hurting someone. Mm. I I there's some I am very empathetic person. I I can feel what another person's feeling, and there's just a part of me that does not enjoy um, seeing another person in pain, which is probably why I'm you know a life coach and 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 because I take the aspects of the martial arts that can help a person overcome their pain and their challenges in their life. That that also I think maybe trans came through as Bobby. When I'm playing Bobby, you know, I there was certainly some conflict there, and it was also written a little bit in the script. With Bobby's end game, it, you know, in in the All Valley Tournament, was to take his belt off and drop it at Sensei's feet with tears mm -hmm. in his eyes, and then leave the tournament because wow. he he just made him forfeit. Bobby really just wanted to win the tournament. He didn't want to hurt anybody, right. you know. He just wanted to win, and right. uh, he believed he could. I believed he could, but even if you know. We'll talk to uh, Mr. Zapka and see how he feels about that. But, Listen, uh, the real, Ron, the real karate guys know it would have probably been Daryl and you in the finals. Like, I'm going to be honest with you. I don't know. In a real real karate world, I don't know. That's what I think. Yeah. yeah well, yeah. So, <laughs> you know, so I – um. So, but it was written in the script, right? So he has tears in his eyes. He really – and he just – he's had enough. And he leaves the Cobra Kai. We filmed that. You know, oh, wow. we filmed I, I, I hurt Dan, I hurt Daniel's leg. Bobby hurts Daniel's leg, walks across the floor, drops the belt at Sensei's creases feet and exits. They wow. didn't use it. They wanted to keep me. They needed to keep me in for future stuff and keep right. me part of Cobra Kai. So, um, but because it was written, I think I was playing the character toward that end and toward that direction. And so I think it, you know, I'm glad it came through that right. uh, I'm glad, I'm glad that conflict came through for sure. And, right. and it's written in the script. I mean, Bobby, each and every time the Cobra Kai were going over the line, Bobby wasn't afraid to stand up and say, look, right. man, he's had leave him alone, man. He's had enough. What is wrong with you? You're crazy, man. You know, um, yeah. even to his best friend, Johnny. So yeah, it, it part of it was written and part of it was just, uh, you know, Bobby and I are, are very um, close. Uh, yeah in tune yeah. with each other <laughs> gotcha well let's talk about that full circle okay so yeah. you, you touch base on your life coaching so tell us now you know uh professionally what you're doing and and the direction of what you know bobby brown is doing these days well bobby brown is um you know standing by at church <laughs> um but sensei ron is focused on you know um Inserting myself back into acting, obviously, a little bit and uh, motivational speaking is, has been my thing for a while and personal development. I, I'm a personal development expert. Um, mm. And that really came from before the martial arts. It came from my athletic background as a kid. You know, when I was I was a competitive swimmer starting at the age of three. And oh, so wow. there was something about the mindset and and positive self-talk to myself that. I learned at a very young age how to direct that focus and that energy into my swim races and became a state champion and regional champion, you know, swimmer. And then as I got older, I got into martial arts and then other sports as too, like golf, like, you know, there's nothing mental about golf. <laughs> I'm kidding. Golf is probably the most mental game, yeah. but um, you know, the martial arts, my sensei would talk to me, and say things to me after, and, and not just me, the class in ways that I never heard anybody talk about mm -hmm. character, about uh, honor, about um, focus, about your mindset and how that can, 
you know, help you in your life. And I just kind of soak that stuff up like a sponge, you know, and, and so those esoteric principles from the martial arts and all of those qualities that we know develop in a person just by through training. Right. Uh, you, I just took that to a broader stage because at some point I realized there's a lot of people out there that don't want to learn how to fight. They don't care. They don't want a broken nose and they don't want to break somebody's nose, but they want the esoteric life skills and principles that the martial arts bring. Right. And so I kind of use that to, and I went to get some other training, like in, in clinical hypnosis and neuro-linguistic programming oh, wow. uh, and those, those types of areas that work with the subconscious mind to really begin to understand it and just kind of put it all together and make it my own Sensei Ron Thomas sort of brand um, and use it to help people overcome their life's you know, challenges. And not even, even if they're not facing life challenges, just to be, be a better human being and focus on success. How do you create success? You know, success is an inside job. It's, you know, so um, yeah, I, I just, I don't know. I'm very fascinated and interested in what we can do as human beings. And I don't think we've, you know, most people are just not tapping into their full potential, right? Uh, including, my, including myself. I'd like to be able to, you know, do that for me and, for, and to help other people do that as well. Ron, I think that's amazing that, you know, th this is the direction that you're going with. And um, if anybody wants to get more information or, or contact you uh, for your coaching opportunities or seminars or anything like that, is there a website that we can go to? SenseiRonThomas.com. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. And I set up, uh, you know, I have a product store. I've got some more stuff coming. It's just been um, slower than I wanted to get, to get things done, like my new book and everything. But uh, yeah. one of the things I added on my products page that's been real popular is, is because of COVID, um, there was no Comic Cons. There was no way fans could get a signed autograph from me. So I just put it up on my, uh, my website and yeah. I've been sending out signed photos around the world. So mm. Mm. that's there as well, just as an aside. But, um, yeah, senseironthomas.com. You can follow me on Instagram, um, okay. the, real, the real Ron Thomas at Insta, you know, at Instagram at the real Ron Thomas. Yeah. Gotcha. Okay. Okay. So, um, do you have any speaking engagements now? COVID obviously has affected everybody in every industry. Uh, do you have any upcoming uh, speaking engagements or anything? I have some feelers out there. Some people are starting to contact me, but people are still a little bit leery about having conferences and, and packing a room full of, you know, the corporations yeah. and it's cheaper for the corporations nowadays to just have everybody work from home and do a bunch of zoom meetings. Um, that's true. You know, so, uh, and it saves them on travel and hotel expenses and everything else. So yeah, the speaking industry has definitely changed and I'm not, I'm not sure what direction it's going to go from here. Right. Uh, right. So, you know, but I, I'm developing some online courses for people. I used to do a lot of live coaching. Do I get on, get on, a phone call or a, a zoom meeting with, you know, 20 people and coach them through stuff. Mm -hmm. and, and I develop curriculums. I'm just going to put that all together into a online course that people can go to my website and access. Mm -hmm. so, yeah. Now just, uh, let's time. talk about Ron, let's talk about your book. I know it's coming, but you know, give us a little bit of background. What uh, you know, do you have an intended? What do you think in 2022 for the book or, or, Oh God, I would love to get it. I would love to get it done and out for the holidays. Okay. Uh, I just don't know if I'm going to make it. Um, Cause I keep, I'm kind of a little bit of a perfectionist. <laughs> you know, I keep going through it and re-editing stuff and, and, and oh, that doesn't sound right. And I changing stuff. And then I got to send it off to an editor and go through the whole publishing process. So 2022 at the latest, I'm trying to get it out before then though. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, Ron, real fast, we have Sensei Emmett. He logged in. If you could say hello to Sensei Emmett. Sensei Emmett, how's it going? We get people from all over, Ron. I'm people yeah, from all yeah, over log in. Um, so so let, let, let's let circle back now. We talked about the life coach and the book coming out, the stuff from Karate Kid, Cobra Kai. What was it like to get back with the boys? That's what I want to know. How did that, you know, how did you feel when you got that phone call or give us the background how that happened? <laughs> well, <laughs> I, I, you know, I felt a little bit of, uh, uh, you know, relief <laughs> that the phone call, like, you know, I'd talked to Billy, at, you know, at the, after the first season and we talked about it and everything, but he, he's sworn a little bit to secrecy too. So of we're course, already sure. into the second season and us original Cobra Kai are going, 
hey, <laughs> remember us? The freaking show is called Cobra Kai. Hello? <laughs> We're like, you know, 16 episodes uh, in late, you know, I get this phone call. <laughs> and I'm um, like, oh, well, good. I'm glad at least you remember us. <laughs> you know? But um, all kidding aside, you know, those guys had planned it from the beginning, the creators, and, and they just, they're very, very careful about when they insert storylines and people into the show. Um, because in their words, they told me straight to my face, they did not want to be the guys to screw up the Karate Kid franchise. Wow. Because they could have. It right. could have gone, it could have gone the other way. Right. You know, it, and there was a lot of chatter online before it the first episode ever hit mm. that. You know, who wants to see these guys? They're in their 50s now. But yeah, yeah. There was all this. It's never going to work. Wrong. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Just like people told me the Karate Kid didn't have an audience, you know. Right. And my own manager included at the time said, there's no demographic for this. There's not going to be an audience. Wow. Wow. So. There's a lot uh, of wrong people. <laughs> I fired him. <laughs> um, but yeah, I, you know, uh, so I was relieved that they're going to bring the OGs back. Right. And we, we've all been in touch all of these years. You know, we've hung out together. Tony O'Dell and I have traveled to different countries together in, in awesome. Hawaii and Costa Rica. And, and um, you know, these are my best friends. They've been to my wedding and I've been to theirs. Oh, wow. and Billy and everything. So and Marty, you know, Christmas parties at our homes. We just we've hung out. We know we've been in touch. So. It's not like, oh, hey, nice to see you after all these years. Well, we've been seeing each other. But when we're in front of the camera doing what we love to do and we have that special bond that we were the originals and we created these characters and they became iconic through the years. And we just have been on this journey together to be in front of the camera again was, of course, and anytime we've we've worked through the years together, you know, I've done some stuff with Marty and Billy um, and the and the boys. But um, to get in front of the camera and and for for real, you know, versus Tosh point oh, for, for <laughs> real, right. re reignite these characters was magic. It was yeah. magical for us. It was so much synergy and energy. And it was almost like stepping off the Karate Kid one day and stepping onto the set of Cobra Kai the next. It was just like nothing changed except we have a little more experience and we're a little older. Right, right. We're all like kids again, like, you know, and just all super excited. And, and um, so that's that's the best word that I've used to come up with it is magical. Wow. Uh, yeah. Because yeah. we, we love each other and but and we also love what we do. Right. So, you know. Well, I think as a, you know, uh, even myself as a Karate Kid fan and, and growing up and a martial artist, you know, you were excited watching the show and you're like, oh, who's coming back? Who's next? And I think that the writers have been phenomenal with like you said, the placement of when the characters appear, when they come out, um, yeah. just just amazing. And I mean, even, you know, bringing you guys back when they did, I mean, it was awesome. And and then, um, you know, having you tie into the last season, it was, I mean, phenomenal. So, you know, pastor, pastor, you know, what? Where did, that's right. Not a priest. <laughs> but where did that come from? Was that that was something the writers put in? Yeah. Yeah. They they said. Basically, you know, we had a phone call um, and with with the writers and the creators and, and they said, you know, we think that you guys were so traumatized by Crease and uh, the Cobra Kai and what you did and what you, you know, went through as when you were younger, that each one of you found your own path to healing. Um, and Bobby, for Bobby, he has become a pastor, you know, um, and, and so I thought that's that that's cool. You know, right. that's interesting. You know, if it was left to me, I'd probably make him a motivational speaker, right? Like, um, I, it. I actually thought it would be funny if he was an orthopedic surgeon <laughs> specializing in knee repair, but right. um, they didn't go with that. So, <laughs> so, you know, I thought that's really interesting. And he's a pastor who's not afraid to hang out with his buddies, have a few beers and get in a bar fight. You know, right, right. It's still conflicted, uh, you know, and, and I, I love that about Bobby, um, yeah, you know, and I love how they incorporated that. So and he's not afraid to take his buddy out in church because he crossed the line, man. You know, awesome. so, you know, is yes. Um, yeah, I love, I love Pastor that. Pastor Bobby, but be the most badass pastor, that, <laughs> pastor that's ever been out there. Right. Yeah. Like, who, 
you know, you, you used to hear when you were kids about the uh, the New York, you know, priest or, or whatever that used to box. You know what I mean? But you're right. like, yeah. you know, Pastor Bobby is like, he's badass. You know what I mean? Yeah, he's yeah. Yeah. Takedowns. <laughs> yeah, I love that about him. You know, it's um, I love what they've done. I love what they've done with the character. And uh, there's there's some depth there. And some, there's still some conflict there. And but he's still trying to do the right thing, you know, because yeah. it's the right thing to do. So he's he's out there helping people. Um, you know, trying to steer them in the right direction. Uh, you know, so it's awesome. So do we do uh, 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 Pastor Bobby, do we get to see him again? You know, what 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 goes on with that? Can't say that. No. You know, I look, they're um they're really hush hush. Right. They make us be hush hush. Uh, you know, it's kind of an agreement. Um yeah, yeah. but uh they're because of social media. Because there's a lot of people who would like to be the first to scoop, to break it, to, yeah, to break it and to leak the storyline. You know, there's a lot of just super fans out there just trolling through stuff, trying to come up with some thing. Right. You know? And yeah. so, and but the creators, but as much as the fans would like to know, the truth is, you don't want to know. You want to be surprised. Of course, you, know, yeah. you want to yeah. be shocked. Like like when Pastor Bobby came back and in season three and the church scene that, you know, people contacted me on social media and said, I'm so glad you're back. And it was such a cool scene. And, and when we came back in season two, all of us together, I had people saying they like in the first movie when, yeah. you know, when um, Daniel kicks Johnny in the face, people jumped up out of their seats. They said they were sitting at home on their couch and they jumped up out of their seats when they saw the originals come back. Yeah. You know, which just says, look, the, the, the creators timed it just perfectly. I think right. people probably jumped up out of their seats in the last episode of season one when Crease came back. Yeah. Cigar. Yeah. <laughs> oh, man, that cigar scene. I'll be so cool, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Sensei Crease. So, yeah. Um, they're, they're, you know, they're doing it right. I, you know, so, I mean, there's more I could say. If I had my input, you know, of I'd course. be. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. But, I mean. I, I've had Bobby can... every episode. Yeah. But Ron, the way that this thing has become a phenomenon, a juggernaut, I mean, they could really take this and so and just keep running with it and running with it and introduce new characters. And then I guess like anybody that's been part of the franchise over those four movies is waiting by their phone. To, hey, do I get the call next? Do I get called up? You know? Yeah. Um, yeah, for sure. Uh, you know, and who wouldn't want to be part of Cobra Kai? Uh, you know? Yeah. So, yeah, it's like I said, it had a global fan base already it already had forward momentum they and they just they went for it they took the risk and and it's a super success and uh, people probably are sitting by the phones i, I don't know you know I, I i wouldn't hold my breath because who knows who knows but even if i did know i couldn't say anything because that's what they okay. were right that that's yeah. the way yeah. they want. And, and i think that's the way it should be i think they should surprise the fans because they do Absolutely. care about the fans. yeah yeah you so, know, I, and I can imagine if you're part of the Karate Kid franchise and uh, franchise, and you have social media presence, you got to be, you know, nonstop. People are messaging, are you part of it? What episode? You know, uh, obviously everybody sees that they've been openly advertising Terry Silver coming back. So everybody wants to know, is Sean coming, this one coming, that one coming? And, yeah. and it's cool, though, because it brings that excitement. So everybody's yeah. like, oh, and they want to speculate. You know, it's, it, it is, it, they're very smart. And, and I, I appreciate yeah. Listen, I appreciate the hustle. That's awesome. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, they're super smart. They know what they're doing. But um, I, I'm actually surprised that they announced Terry Silver ahead of time. Yeah, I, yeah, because they've little, been tight-lipped on everything. Yeah, I'm surprised about that. I don't know why they did it. I'm sure they have their reasons. Um, but, uh, you know, yeah, they're, I, I, they're just – they know what they're doing for sure. And it's, obvious, it's obviously working. So – yeah, uh, fans can't wait for season four and season five, and you know. Yeah. Now they a, said December, right? The next one's December. That's what I heard. <laughs> you can't tell us that either. <laughs> I, I, I I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Well, that's what they're saying. That's what they're saying. December. So. Yeah. Anything can change, you know. I mean, uh, they changed the last season. They put one date and then they moved it up. Right. Yeah. Anything can change. Netflix and Sony Pictures have their fingers on the trigger. Mm. Uh, not, not me, <laughs> not, not, you know, so yeah. Yeah. Wow. Um, Ron, real fast. We had a Eric Dutra or Dutra. If you could say hello to Eric. What's up, Eric. 
Um, and it looks like this person follows you is Isabella uh, Vizina, and she's from Quebec. She was watching the show, Isabella. Or Isabella. I, do rec- I, I do recognize the name. Hey, Isabella, how you doing? All right. Now, <clears throat> life coach, karate kid, Cobra Kai, actor. Where do you see yourself and what do you want to leave as the Ron Thomas legacy? You know, what, what, what do you want people to most re- remember you by? The most important thing in my life now is my daughter. Mm. So I'm trying to be the best father that I can be. And she's actually my life coach, right? She's just, you know, she's seven now and she shows me all my stuff, <laughs> right? You know, it's like kids will just, here's your crap. You know, it's not me. It's you, buddy. Get your crap. Together. So, I, you know, anybody who's a deep thinker and looking beyond the obvious and not wanting to blame it on their children or whatever is going to look at themselves in the mirror. And that's what I do. And I'm like, man, uh, I thought I had it together. But my seven year old daughter shows me otherwise all the time. You know, And yeah. she she's my perfect life coach. She's, she's every bit as strong willed and determined as I am. You yeah. know, she is a fighter. Um, and. So, yeah, and I love her to pieces, and my legacy has to live on through her, and I want to set her up, and I want her to remember me as a loving father who really cared and really wanted the best for her in her life. You know, that's, that's my number one priority in, as, in terms of legacy. Um, in terms of uh, helping other people, which is, like I said, I'm really passionate about that. For, for whatever reason, I'm empathetic. Um, you know, I can cry watching an Oprah show. You know, <laughs> I mean, I just can feel what other people are going through. And I've always kind of been that way. And I just want to help people deal with their challenges, overcome them and live their best lives. I want, you know, because I think, God, where are we is in, in the human race, in humanity, in America, where, the, where are we? Um, Things are not what they used to be back in the 80s right. or the 90s or the 2000s. Things are changing and changing rapidly. And we need people who are deep thinkers, who can think for themselves, who are looking beyond the surface for deeper meanings um, in their lives and in the lives of others and what they're viewing on TV and the, the crap that's coming out on social media. You know, I had a, a fan the other day who's telling me that she's getting bullied on social media. Wow, in the fandom experience, like for what? Yeah, about yeah. A, a freaking show, Cobra Kai. In the scheme of things, we're not curing cancer. You know, right. Right. in the scheme of things, we're not. It's not that important. I mean, don't be bullying people. And what I told her, and if you're a bully, listen to me. I'm going to tell you right now. You feel small, and the reason you build, you bully people is to make yourself feel bigger than. And that, and that's what I told her. They feel less than. And, 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 um, but bullies are victims too. They're right. feeling small for a reason. Right. And usually it's because they're being bullied. So, I mean, I, I can feel empathy for even the bully. Martial arts, as you know, has helped help people overcome bullying, but also overcome being a bully. Right. Um, yeah. Right. So, um, uh, so I don't know where the hell I'm going with this. <laughs> oh, my legacy. So, yes. So, uh, you know, I think the world needs um, guidance sometimes, and that's what I bring through my coaching and, and, and my personal development and also need leaders to step up. But you can only lead if you're able to lead yourself, and that's where people run up against that wall. They can't lead themselves, and that's, I think, where sometimes a life coach comes in or, right. a, pro, or a motivational speaker or just a good damn book or a pastor can come in <laughs> yes, yes. yes. or a rabbi. I don't care. I'm not religious. I, I'm not religious. I'm spiritual. Right. Um, people right. actually think I'm a Christian because of my character. I play one on TV. Okay. Right. But I am very deeply spiritual. Um, right. Anyway. Yeah. The legacy I want to be known by is hey, that, 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 that uh, actor who played Bobby Brown and, and uh, left such a legacy in Cobra Kai and, and, um, he also changed a lot of people's lives and, right. uh, and martial arts had a big impact on that as well. A big part of that too. Martial arts is important. I think, you know, one, one of the few institutions, listen, I was in, well, let me finish that sentence. One of the few institutions in the world um, that teach people life skills like 
character development, focus, discipline, honor, confidence, self-respect, respect for others is the martial arts. It's ingrained. It's, it's required as part right. of your training in most schools. It's required. Um, but in public schools or even in churches or other organizations, it's not required as part of the curriculum. So martial arts really has a lot to do with you. You do it too. You help people, you know, you help people, um, uh, solidify those qualities within themselves. So, uh, yeah, and I think that's important. I think it's really, really, I think it's more important now than ever before. Right. We as a human race are facing some very serious freaking challenges. Yeah, you know? oh, absolutely. And, yeah, Ron, I think I think one of the most humbling and, and really compassionate things that you said that stood out for me, and I don't know if the other viewers was, you didn't talk about your career. You didn't talk about the other stuff. You talked about your love for your daughter and that you want to be a good father. And I think that that, is probably the most powerful thing that I can hear. Um, you know, myself, I'm a father, I have three boys, so I can relate, you know, I know what you're talking about. And, you know, I was a very young father, so I had to learn, you know, nobody gave me a book like you, you know, you're going through it now. And it's, yeah. uh, you know, um, kids are, you know, our future kids are, you know, such an important because I feel like if we love them and we're compassionate and, you know, you're teaching your daughter the right way and, you know, hopefully other parents are doing the same th way, then we can change this, this whole environment and the culture, right? But it takes us and it takes our neighbors and it takes our people. But that, that stood out that you, you know, you immediately talked about your daughter. Um, I have seen the pictures, gorgeous, you know, so congratulations, sir. Yeah, thank you. And, and how's the missus? Your wife's been quiet. How's the webinar going? She's good. I, don't, I heard her talking back there a, a minute ago. She's in another part of the house. Um, yeah, again, she's in the corporate world and she's on webinars all the time. Uh, so again, going back to the motivational speaking, I can I can tell you from experience that how her life has changed um, with this whole COVID thing. But wow. uh, she's here. She's she's trying to be quiet. I think she knows I'm doing this. Is your daughter uh, your daughter trains martial arts? I can assume. Yeah, yeah. I um, you know I work with her a little bit here at home, but you know she needs other kids her size to train right. with. Right. You know that. And then she also doesn't want to learn from dad. She wants to show dad. <laughs> she wants to show dad what she thinks she knows. So, yeah, you, you know. know, but she does learn and, and uh, she's taking jujitsu now awesome. and uh, from a, from a very good school. And uh, yeah. And then what's cool about that is I get to go home and correct her and her footwork or whatever she's doing, but yeah, yep, she's in it. Cause one of the promises I made, to uh, to her and to myself is she's never going to drown, so she's learned how to swim. She swims all four strokes competitively now, um, and she's never going to get bullied or worse, you know, she, like raped. Like, and and why is it important? I think for jujitsu uh, in in that realm for women is because where does a guy want a woman? Right on her back. Correct. So you got to learn how to fight from your back. So jujitsu has a lot of things to bring to the table in terms of real street practical self-defense that, so I've got her, uh, I've got her training and um, in those two things, anything else she wants to do fine, but those are required. Gotcha. gotcha. Martial arts and swimming and required. And she's, well, a, she's a fantastic gymnast. She loves soccer. Um, so she wants to do some dance. You know, she just wants to do it all. She's such a, she's so much like me. I just wanted to experience everything, you know, right, right. It's life. Like she's <laughs> high on life. So what's, what else is there for me to experience? And uh, yeah. she, how uh, old is she, Ron? How old? Seven. Wow. Yeah. Oh my God. Such a great age. Oh my God. Yeah. But challenging. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh my God. I have a, uh, my oldest son's 21. Uh, my second son is 17. And then my little guy is nine. Mason is nine. So I, I feel for you what your, your seven-year-old experience. <laughs> oh my God. You said you were a very young father. I was, I'm a pretty old father. <laughs> I'm always saying to my wife, you know, parenting is a young man's game. <laughs> <laughs> but you're doing good. You got her swimming and doing everything. Leap. Yeah, no, for sure. Yeah. yeah. Awesome. Awesome. Well, Ron, I want to bring everything full circle. We get a lot of people that watch our show and you touched on a lot of great things today. But what I would like to know is, is, is there any advice you can give to an up and coming, you know, martial artist or actor that's maybe looking to, 
you know, he wants to follow the the, the Bobby Brown way or the Ron Thomas way. And, you know, uh, any, any advice you could give them if somebody's trying to break into the industry um, and has a similar uh, background as you that they actually had theater uh, background. So any advice you can give to them? Well, for to, to martial artists, you know, uh, the first thing I, that came to mind was the old saying that, you know, what's a black belt? A black belt is a white belt that never quit. Um, and so you don't quit. Just keep training. Uh, you know, it's, it's not easy. If it was meant to be easy, you know, black belt would mean nothing. Right. Black, but a black belt means a lot to a lot of people. So um, just keep training. And, uh, you know, there's a lot of martial artists in Hollywood that aren't actors that don't have a theater background. There are a lot of stunt guys. Mm. And, you know, stunt guys can have a very fulfilling and financially rewarding career wow. being a stunt guy. So, yeah. but you have to be there. You have to be in Hollywood or nowadays, even Atlanta, the places where, you know, there's a lot of filming going on and get, get involved with a stunt group. And, and, um, you know, you got to suck it up. It's kind of like, uh, if you're a brand new stunt guy, you got it's kind of like joining a fraternity. You're going to get, right. you're going to get all the grunt work. Yeah. Um, but at one point you'll get a break from the stunt coordinator and you'll get, to do a stunt and then another one and then another one. And then suddenly now you're a stunt guy, you, you know, using your martial arts thing and, and don't just stick to martial arts. So it, the more you can do, if you're a gymnast, if you can take a fall, um, mm -hmm. like in the martial arts, like judo or jujitsu or whatever that teach falling, you can do all, have all those skills together, including, mm -hmm. you know, the, the high flying kicks and all that you can be, you can get into stunt weapons, weaponry, um, fight choreography, all of that stuff is available to you if you want to pursue that. You know, mm -hmm. if you want to pursue acting, take some acting classes, you know. Um, right. it, it's, it is a skill. It's not as easy as just showing up on camera and saying a bunch of lines. You, right. you, you got to hone the skill and you got to know what actors do and go through. So, um, you know, start first start with acting classes. And then for anybody who really who's really serious, you got to live where the filming is taking place right. for actors. Not mu so much anymore. You know, actors because the acting industry has changed. It used to be that I go on an audition. I have to drive across town somewhere in Hollywood and show up in person. Nowadays you can submit a tape. Mm. You can, your first audition can be via a recorded tape, send it in the casting, you know, self record. Second might be a zoom interview and then second or third audition, you might actually have to show up to the office, but by then they know if they really are serious about you, especially, you know, they're casting all around the world now um, mm. because right. of the internet, because of zoom, because you can right. submit a tape. So, um, but wherever you are in the world, if you want to do it, um, get involved in acting classes, train. And then if you're very, very, very serious, move to LA or New York, you know, right. Or Atlanta, I guess. Atlanta's a, sec a third third option now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow. Yeah. Well, Ron, real fast, we did have somebody just log in real fast. Uh, they said, hey, guys, my daughters and I are big Cobra Kai fans. And they said, you know, we're the best. You're the best. And that is Robin Allen. If you could say hello to Robin Allen. They chimed in last minute. Hey, Robin. How's it going out there? Ron, thank you so much for your time today. I really, really appreciate it. Um, I mean, you dropped a lot of knowledge today. So, I, I mean, I hope everybody took something from today. And and I appreciate with you kind of fitting us in your your tight window that you have there. So Yeah, no. Yeah, hey, hey, thanks for having me, Jose. I appreciate no, it. No, thank you so much. I do got to give a shout out to uh, Sensei William Ford for helping us uh, connect. Um, he's been amazing. And I don't know, my, my circle feels complete now, almost complete. So you're going to laugh. The first Cobra Kai person I had was Marty Cove because I actually – I worked, we did, uh, uh, it was an event together in Atlantic City, and he and I were kind of next to each other. So we talked to form the relationship, and uh, I brought him to a couple of my tournaments. Uh, so Marty kind of opened it up, and then I had Daryl and William and you and Sean. And, you know, so it's been pretty exciting. So I don't know who's going to be next, but I want right. to say thank you so much, Ron. Thank you. Yeah, no, you're welcome. Thank you for having me. I appreciate it. Best of luck. I'll ask you one more time. You can't give us any any spoilers, right? No spoilers. <laughs> Nope. Awesome. <laughs> Ron, thank you again to all of our viewers. Thanks for tuning in today, guys. We hope you enjoyed the show. And uh, Ron, thank you so much, sir. Much respect. God bless. And we hope you have a great weekend with your family. Back at you. Everybody you take care. Bye-bye. Bye, guys.